Okay, this will be the last update on the Suburban. Got it all polished out and detailed last week. But I'm just wanting to show you the functionality of all the gauges and instrument stuff. Just to show working and all. All right. Be on. Start. just as it should as if it was done from the factory give you a little under hood view oh boy the lighting on that is awful let me see if I can get some light hold on it's very much like factory all the wiring is right where it needs to be. There's no crazy mess. I did run a, a additional wire for accessories, that red and black wire right there. I ran it to the rear of the truck because I have installed uh, like extra reverse lights and things in the past. And I just thought it would be a little neat upgrade to have access to the wiring, you know, without having to run it after the fact. But see, every, all the wiring, that I did to interface the diesel harness to the Suburban harness went right back through the factory boot. And then it was all pinned just like the factory would have done it with the same wire colors, um, pinned in the same plugs. So if anybody ever had to go back and diagnose anything on this vehicle later on, um, if there was a problem with something they could use factory wiring diagrams, factory colors, factory pinouts. Um, so just about anybody should be able to work on this if, if the need arises. But other than that, I've been real tickled with it. I've put about 3,000 miles or so on this truck since we finished it. Um, given from my last video, I didn't have all the, the gauge stuff sorted out. And I was working with uh, BD Diesel Works to get the cluster programming and the BCM programming to uh, get everything to function correctly. Like, uh, this is a 09 cluster. So the 09 cluster had the uh, temperature and the compass was in the cluster. So it was a little message up there saying compass and temperature but it wouldn't read it because there's the wiring is not going to the cluster it's going to the rearview mirror so we had to remove things like that and I had a few other little messages up there for things that this truck like uh, trailer brakes this Suburban didn't have the factory integrated trailer brakes so I had to get that removed out of the BCM program to uh, make that function I mean so you wouldn't have any error messages or anything up there um, He's been real good to work with. If you got some, if you got time and you're not in a real big rush, I think he's like a one one guy that handles all that. And if it's more custom like this was, it's not like what he normally sells is generic. 
uh, cluster upgrades and he has a few options that you can choose from and things like making the lights turn to strobe lights and turning the reverse lights on as work lamps and things like that that he's developed this pretty much turnkey as soon as you get the device from him he uh, uploads your VIN to his server system and then you can access those kind of generic options immediately um, but in my case I was working with him to get this this stuff wrote for the cluster and the body control module so it took a little more time I think we started around somewhere in December and then we had Christmas and then you know New Year's and we were all vacationing and holidays and I don't know just kind of drug out and in the last few weeks um, this is July uh, I, I, I kind of let it go and then in the last few weeks or so I was messaging him back and forth and we finally got it all sorted out but um, things that he can add to the cluster is like tells you when to when you put it in four wheel drive here it puts a four wheel drive light up there that wasn't factory that um, like on these trucks you got the the headlight switch and the four wheel drive switch I've seen just in my messing with this vehicle that uh, sometimes people don't understand it has auto headlights and they're over here fiddling with the headlight switch and they end up t turning the knob and putting it in a four wheel drive and now it illuminates in the dash and kind of brings it to your attention that something else is going on. I, I really do like that feature especially on this body style where the, the four wheel drive knob is directly beside the AC, the headlight knob and they're both the same. So unless you take your eyes off what you're doing and really get over here and pay attention, this was kind of not smart as far as I'm concerned with GM. Like on the pickup trucks, like on the work truck models, they put the four wheel drive knob over here and the headlamp switch over here. I think that would have made more sense or either change the design of this switch to make it, you know, more obvious that you're not grabbing the headlight switch but that's a that's neither here nor there but i just want to put this little video together and kind of show the i got some rags down in here to keep dirt from getting on the carpet just to kind of show the condition of it you know it's got a it's not absolutely perfect it's got a few flaws you know like the armrest stuff there and the dash is cracked here and here other than that the dash is in good shape it's got two cracks the headliner is in really good shape in this truck and when I got this truck this was a bench seat suburban and I converted it to um, captain seats and these were actually from a Denali and it was not disclosed until I was there and I drove like two hours so I ended up getting them anyway so they're kind of like this perforated leather so it's not an exact match um, kind of upset me a little bit when I got there and saw that and then that was not shown in the pictures when I got it um, but other than that I mean you can recover the rear seats or I can recover the rear seats if somebody buys it and wants me to do the finish doing all this little piddly stuff um, but the carpet came out really well carpets clean um, the main, like I said, the main objective of this video is just to show the functionality and kind of show some of the imperfections in the truck. Because uh, this is going on the market. It's a little staining in the carpet right there. Nothing too bad. Throw a little mat or something over it. And again, the headliner is in good shape. All these side panels. It's got a little scuffing like most Suburbans do if you throw some stuff in the back scuffed up um, but I have submitted this to bring a trailer to and they review these vehicles to um, I, and I guess it's like an approval process of whether they'll even put them on their auction site so um, that's pending a review and see if we can get this thing posted on there and just it's the first one I've done um, but I, I'm not new to the diesel world. I'm not new to GM platform. Um, I'm a diesel tech. I own a shop, a, a reputable shop here in my local area. Do quite a bit of diesel work. Um, 
do a lot of custom work for people you know things um, different add-ons and modifications that people may want for their vehicles uh, so uh, this is this is not new to me other than this is the first one of these I've done I've replaced hundreds and hundreds of diesel engines in uh, Duramax trucks I've done extensive repair work uh, cab off body off anyway um, I'm, I'm not new or what would you call unexperienced in, in doing work like this I mean like I build trailers for people which that's not got anything to do with this at all but um, I don't know I, I'm pretty unique to the market around here is kind of like if you need it I can I can take care of it for you but uh I think it turned out really well uh, even I've got the dual tanks features working perfectly they uh, transfer fuel from the rear tank to the front tank as they should from the, like if it was factory it has two inch fuel filler neck which I've showed in previous videos um, I know a lot of companies take pride in making sure that that's something that is offered because it is a um, quite a hassle if the fuel filler neck is not sized up for the big fuel nozzles it'll kind of blow fuel back all on you and take forever to get fuel in it so that has been done all the way to the tank the tanks have been reboned and um, the fuel filler neck and the wire and everything is all two inch so there's no issues in putting fuel in it I've put several tanks of fuel through it since I've been driving it and I've been to the only problems I've ever had putting fuel in it is like if you go to a truck stop with those great big like one inch plus size fuel nozzles they flow ridiculously fast you can't run those wide open and fill it up but you could do one click and walk away and it'll fill it up no problem but uh, all the lights are working. All the instruments are working as they should. Um, uh, it's got a brand new set of those XD. I'm not sure. I just found something that looked pretty neat and I ordered them. And then these are the Patagonia Milestar uh, XTs. They are in a 255... 295 55 20 I think that's somewhere around a 32 or 33 inch tire kind of fills the well out real nice turns real good had to do just a little bit of trimming here on the bottom of the valence to get it to clear really good and again it's got all the steering upgrades it's got the blue top box it's got brand new hydro boost got the kryptonite death grip steering it's got kryptonite lower ball joints the upper control arms and upper ball joints are just um, normal part store items because at the time when I was putting all this together some of that stuff was on quite a back order from um, kryptonite and it's not lifted it's quite a bit higher than a, a factory four-wheel drive suburban would be but it's just based off the fact that it has the reverse rate body lift and it's uh two inches to nothing so it gives the appearance that it's a little taller but it's it's more the height of a stock duramax 2500 pickup truck the the front suspension is very much in stock geometry it's not turned up at all so it rides really good it's got the bill steam 5200 shocks on it um so there's no accelerated ball joint wear or nothing coming from the front due to the torsion bars being turned way up but i just kind of wanted to put this video together just to highlight some of the the goods and the bads so if somebody does run across it on the bring a trailer website if they allow it to be posted on there um they can come and uh, it will be a video link added to the the listing so they could go and look through the little uh, video playlist that I'll put together that kind of highlights you know the what kind of condition the vehicles in the paint 
the wheels, the tires, the tires are brand new with about 3,000 miles on them. Wheels, same time. Auto suspension components. You know, everything, everything drivetrain related other than the engine, front differential, rear differential, transmission, transfer case. Uh, the donor truck, the Suburban had 240, 40,900. Well, that's what it has on it now. Um, it was, you know, a little less than that when I started driving it due to the fact you know, I put like 3,000 miles on it, but the the Duramax drivetrain had within 5,000 miles. I don't remember the exact number, but it was like within 5,000 miles of the Suburban. So we went with the Suburban mileage because the mileage follows the VIN of the vehicle and the title and things like that. So that is the true mileage of the Suburban. Um, I think the truck had like maybe 5,000 miles more than that on it. So I'm not exactly sure, so maybe around 45,000, 245,000 miles or so on the drivetrain. But most of it's been gone through, water pumps. I mean, I did not go into the engine. It has not had head gaskets and studs and none of that. It is a very good running, very well maintained engine. Um, this truck, this Suburban and the truck that I used for the swap came from the same people. Um, they were bought. You know within a year of each other this was the wife's truck the other one was the husband's truck the husband passed away i ended up purchasing both of them because she wanted to get her a minivan um but anyway those vehicles turned into one because one i wanted to do this for a long time i really was building this for me uh, but since i started this project uh we got we're in the process of building a house so this is going to go towards funding that project now we'll revisit this later but um i really i had no intention on getting rid of this vehicle that's why I, I built it in the fashion that i did you know i wanted it to be as perfect as possible i wanted anybody to be able to get in it and drive it and have the same experience as if they had gotten into just any normal 2500 pickup truck with a diesel engine in it you know plus some seats in the back and it has been just that um several people have driven this truck and everybody praises how well it drives and how well it rides it's 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 uh it's it turned out really good but uh again i'm, I'm just doing this for a highlight just to kind of show that everything is done everything cleaned up really nice all the gauges work there's no funky error messages all the functionality of the factory vehicle work exactly as they should um and again like all the wiring that was done was factory looms pulled apart wires that needed to be added was added to the same color as the what needed to be added you know as far as what the wiring harness said if it needed to be a a brown with a white stripe the wires were you know matched up perfectly to accommodate any future repairs i'm pretty i'm a big stippler on wiring i love wiring and that was one of my strong suits on this it did not take me long to get that stuff sorted out uh, and being that this was a two-wheel drive you know i had to add the four-wheel drive control module behind the dash wiring associated the switch and it works flawlessly so i don't know maybe it'll it'll do really good on there i'm, I'm not sure how it's going to turn out I've had a couple people offer to buy it uh, locally nobody has come up with any money so i'm going to stick it on there and see how that turns out and uh hopefully it does really good on there I think they um, might take a few weeks to get it to post if they do decide to let it post. Um, and then I think the, the auction term is a week. So we're looking at maybe six to eight weeks or so before it's uh, posted on the site and sold. If, uh, if all goes well, it might be a little sooner than that. It might be a little longer than that. I don't know. I've never put anything on that website before. I got to 
buddy of mine that has posted several things up there and he's had really good experience and uh that's off of his direction of what time frame was so if you're interested uh when the if it does go live when it goes live i'm going to attach a link to this video here that carries you to that website to its sale platform so uh if you're interested you could go there and you could bid on it. I appreciate you watching. Thanks.